everybody. Okay, I'm doing a set of nails on myself today and I thought I'd just show you a little bit of prep. This tool I got from the pound shop, right? I've got an expensive cuticle pusher and then I've got this and I actually prefer this one. It's crazy, but I find it more comfortable. So all I'm doing here is just pushing back that cuticle area and then you can see this dead skin coming up as well. This is non-living tissue. So once I've done that on all uh, five fingers, I then go in with my cuticle bit on the e-file and I remove that dried non-living tissue. Uh, and then after that, I take a 180 grit file and I just buff the surface of the nail. And what you're doing here is removing the shine. I'm not putting any pressure on it. I'm letting the file do the work and I'm just buffing the shine off and giving it's a kind of uneven surface like a, it's like when you sand wood before you apply gloss you need something for the product to, to stick to there needs to be some friction there instead of a smooth surface then I just use isopropyl alcohol on my nail brush and then I'm checking here and I can see this is Denise uh, I will link her video it's really good uh, who I was talking to about this so I'm going back in and just removing any of the extra dust that's gathered. Sometimes it's just the dry skin that's making it look white, but just in case there's any more dust particles caught down there, I just go in again, and the rest of it is now just dry skin. So I'm gonna spray it with isopropyl alcohol, give it a good brush, and if it looks nice and clean, then you're good to go. And I do that on all the other nails as well. So I'm going in with my prep. This is what I'm using. Let me tell you everything I'm using, actually. I'm using my Glitter Fairy brush, which is a size 10 round brush. I love the, the, the artwork on it. I'm using my MIG uh, dehydrator and primer, Glitter Bells glass slippers, Trilogy White, and Nail Nails Warm Beige. And my Glitter Bells monomer, obviously. So I've applied a form, and you can see here, there is an area of acrylic still on the nail because I just filed back as much as I could. I dehydrate, wait for that, see how quickly that um, dries up, and then I go in with the acid primer, nice and gently, not too much. You don't need a lot of it. It's just I'm clumsy with my nails. Wait for that to dry, and then I laid down a thin base. I thought I'd filmed it, and I had obviously not, so all I've done is it thinly extend the nail. There's not much bulk to it at all. And then as it's drying, I pinch it. Then I remove the forms. And then I just run over it gently with the file just to make sure they're all even in the way I want them. So these are my sculpted tips. There we go. And I'm gonna go in first with the pinky finger. I'm just gonna get myself set up. I'm basically doing this design, but as you can see, the white got quite yellowed by the warm beige, so I'm going to do it slightly differently this time. So I'm going on the pinky finger first, and I'm going to be applying the Trilogy White to the tip. I really like the Trilogy powders. Uh, I, I always have done, it's just I find I prefer Glitterbell System and Monomer, and also I use a lot of glam and glitz so it makes more sense to get it all from the same place but I love Trilogy White it's the least sticky that I've used it's very very easy to work with I'm just applying it feathering it back trying not to add too much bulk so if I see it starting to change shape at the sides there just brush that down Feather it back and then make sure I'm getting all those edges, so tuck it in. Nice and neat, as thin as you can. It's really easy to end up with a bulky nail when you're doing an ombre or a baby boomer. It's, it, it's so easy. And I did it in this set, actually. I just added too much product and I was really cross with myself. But it's just something that I think with practice, you get used to what you need to use or how much you need to use. So I'm doing that and I'm feathering that back up and then pulling it back down again. Making sure my brush is nice and wet so that it can blend in nicely. And just trying to keep that shape as much as possible. 
I'm then going to be using some of that beautiful angel wing um, material that Dawn sent me. Uh, so I'm going to lay a very, very wet bead down on that tip there. And it was relatively warm, so it was it was drying at a good speed. Not too fast, it wasn't too warm. And I'm going to push that uh, material into the acrylic and just hold it as it starts to dry and get sticky. I want to take it slightly over the, where the, the free edge of my natural nail is so that we can block that out because I don't want that being seen. I know like jelly nails and everything are trending at the moment, but I don't like the look of the nail the natural nail ending. I, I don't know why, I just can't stand it. Um, then I go in with some of the warm beige and I'm literally going to feather that down over the joint where the, um, the angel wings, fairy wings material starts, just to kind of tone that down a bit. I just don't want a hard line, I want it nice and subtle. Just running my brush around the side there. I'm going to go in with another bead and put that on my cuticle area. I'm just pushing that in and around and then feathering the edges down. Nice and simple but quite effective. And I'm going to check my cuticle area, just make sure I'm tucking that in nicely. Then I'm going to go in with this beautiful glitter from the Glitter Fairy. It's from the Matte Chunky Cut collection and it's called Putty. And to me, it looks lacy and really beautiful. And I've never worked with a matte glitter before. But this is really pretty. And it flows beautifully on the Baby Boomer sets. It would be great for wedding nails. Okay, so now I'm going in and doing another baby boomer here. Again, placing the white. You can see it's not very sticky at all. I really do love the Trilogy powders. It's just, um, I got into glitter bells, but I still 100% would recommend Trilogy to anyone who's looking for a system that they want to work with, especially if you don't like working too wet or too dry, because Trilogy is a very versatile system. And if you do want to try it, the trial kit is really generous. And I, and I still have a 10% discount code, which I will put in the, the box below. So always check the description box because I do have discount codes for different companies. And I also have the links as well provided for everyone. So I'm doing the same here and just putting the white down and feathering it back up. and then also dragging it down so it blends in. Started to dry here, so I ended up with a bit of bulk that I didn't want, but we deal with that later on. There's always an answer. It's called a file. <laughs> and I noticed later on as well, there's a slight area of shadowing showing through from the natural nail. So um, obviously that was what glitter was invented for as well. It covers a multitude of sins. So this one did, yeah, it, where it dried a bit fast there, it did turn out a bit bulky, but it was fine in the end. This is a full glitter nail. Now, if you're not used to working with matte, with uh, chunky glitters, then don't go in with a big bead because you're getting a right kerfuffle. Um, so just pick up a bead of clear acrylic and then dip it in a small amount of glitter and work at it. I'm used to working with glitters now, so it doesn't worry me. I went in with a, a wet bead. I can move that glitter about and get it exactly where I want it and still have it nice and flat. And that's really all you're doing. You don't just want to splodge it and leave it because you'll end up with a huge lumpy nail and it won't, it just won't look right but you can still move those pieces of glitter around to make sure you get maximum coverage. And also so that you even out the effect of the glitter. 
it's a beautiful mix. There are some really small pieces as well in it. It's, it's really lovely. And it has this kind of almost satiny sheen to it if you put a gloss top coat on. So it's not completely matte. It does have this nice, I don't know, I can't explain it. It's really beautiful. So obviously as you get closer to the cuticle area, you really want to make sure that glitter's flat. You want to make sure you've got room for your capping because obviously you don't want to end up having to cap too close to the cuticle because you're going to run into problems with lifting. So just nudge those pieces about. You don't have to go in and cap straight away, you can give it plenty of time to dry and set. So I'm just checking and noticing I missed a bit there so I'm going to come in with some more there as well. And it completely went blurry. <laughs> oh I see because I had a nail poking in the way so it distorted the lens. As you can see, I'm just working with a little bit more around those edges until I'm happy with the coverage. And then just making sure everything's tucked in nicely. Now, I could have used a colour underneath this, or a super fine, but I purposely didn't. I wanted that look that multi-dimensional look of having some areas that may be clear not too much as you can see I was trying to tuck that in and I decided that it wasn't going to tuck in nicely so I removed it because otherwise I would end up with having to put too much by the cuticle so I'm going in on the what finger is that is that my pinky yes it is going on on, on the little finger and laying down the warm beige for the baby boomer nail And what I did with this hand that I didn't do with the other hand was once I'd got my blend, I swiped the tip away because on my other hand, the tip is discolored from the warm beige and I just didn't notice on the day when I did my other hand. So this time I did uh, swipe it away and add a small bead of um, white. Here I'm just dampening down the nail with some monomer and then I'm gonna cap it in clear. I'm going to use a nice wet bead to get in all around that material because there's quite a lot going on here. Get in around that material, get in around that glitter. In hindsight, I should have trimmed the material first. I would recommend that because it made it difficult to fathom where I was capping. It distorted my view of the nail. So it would have been easier for myself if I'd have trimmed that uh, material first. Going in with another bead. I don't really need a ton of it near the cuticle area because I've got plenty of product there. Making sure everything's covered. And then going in on the next finger with another of the baby boomer nails. And this is the finger that was already oddly shaped because the product dried on me. So um, this took a lot of filing uh, and refining and there was this shadow area where I'd not noticed initially that the white hadn't covered. So what I decided to do was uh, lay down the warm beige and then go in and do a kind of a glitter with the matte chunky cut glitter, like a swipe across just to cover that area. And it actually worked quite well because it tied it in with the index fingernail. So it didn't look too bad. It turned out fine in the end, it just took a lot of extra filing. And I went out of shot here, I do apologise. And again I also swiped the tip after, after creating the blend that I was happy with, I swiped the tip again because that warm beige is quite an intense colour. So I swiped the tip and I did add a little bit more of the um, white. It's quite interesting though, I don't know if anyone else has used, um, I think, I used a uh, Blue Sky Matte Top Coat and I am convinced that it's yellowed the results actually. When I look at them today compared to how they were when I did them yesterday, they look yellowy. 
so I wouldn't recommend using Blue Sky matte top coat over a white because it absolutely discolours. It's really very obvious now. It looks like I've got like nicotine stained white areas when they were lovely yesterday. So there's a tip for you. Can anyone recommend any other matte top coats that are good? I'd love to know because that's the only one I have, so I'm going to be changing it. <laughs> I've never used it on white before, so I didn't know. So I'm just covering up that naughty bit, and then I'm going to go and cap with a nice wet bead. I'm trying to add, not add product where it's not needed, because that's just silly. So I'm trying to cap the areas I need to, cap the blend, but also I'm aware that the nail is already not the shape I want it. So I've got to do a lot of work on it. So I'm trying to make sure I don't add yet more product to the area where I don't want it. So as you can see, it was just a bit too bulky for me, but I sorted it out. So I'm going to go in and cap this finger as you can see, I'm just wiping over it again with monomer. Then I'm going to go in with a nice wet bead and cap all of that glitter nice and neat. So it's really getting in all those particles. I'm definitely preferring this new camera angle by the way. I know it wobbles a little bit but it's so much easier to work with. Oh, I also just want to welcome my new subscribers. Um, I'm really grateful. I never thought that I'd get 100 subscribers and here I am kind of only, I don't know, 230 or something away from having 1,000 subscribers and that's amazing. It's crazy. And I am really, really grateful. So here's the thumb, I'm going to go in and do another baby boomer on here, same as before, so I apply my first bead where that white ends. I, I, as you can see, I push back the back of the bead just to blend it into the nail so we don't have a harsh line there. And then I'm going to add my cuticle bead. Now I did experiment with the thumb and actually applied the matte, I applied the um, CJP tack free top gloss and then rubbed in some flakes from CJP uh, but I didn't like the effect of it uh, over the baby boomer, I just, wasn't, I just didn't like it so my, it was my fault, I, it wasn't anything to do with the products, I tried something and I didn't like it which is part of what nails is about isn't it, experimenting. So I've added a bit more white to the tip there, just to make sure that we're not discolouring too much, but now I've discovered it's the blooming top coat anyway. Thank you, blue sky. I was like going crazy. I'm like, I'm sure I didn't add that colour to the tip. It looks yellow, what's that about? So now I'm just gonna go and cap everything. I've sped this up a little bit because you really don't need to see too much capping. It's probably boring, I do apologise. I should have warned you to get a cup of tea before we started this. Because obviously when I file, I don't want to ruin the blend that I've got that I'm happy with. So cap away, lovely jubbly. Checking the strength and, and the shape of the nail. Again, not adding too much bulk where it's not necessary because it's only going to end up being filed away and that's going to be yet more work. Now, is there anything you guys would like to see next? Have you got anything you'd like to challenge me to do or anything you have seen that you think I wonder if Sarah would like to do that then if so let me know 
Um, I've filed all these nails. I've, there were bits that I thought I'd filmed and I must have inadvertently pressed the button twice so it's gone on off because I, I lost a ton of footage. But I'm going in with these crystals. Now some are from the Glitter Fairy, some are from Crystal Parade and some are from Angel Crystals. Um, I spent hours separating hundreds and hundreds of crystals into shape order the other day. It was annoying because I'd got them from crystal mixes. I love this nail, it's so cute. So that's before top coat. So I'm now gonna go in and apply the matte top coat. Again, I would not recommend this top coat at all. They look lovely in that picture and today they look discolored. So um, I definitely would not recommend that at all. I just love the sparkle from these so much. And then I'm gonna go in with CJP Tack Free Top Gloss. Ah, I love this uh, beautiful material. It adds such a lovely effect. And I, I do the underneath of that as well because it is like a crystal tip. I believe the Glitter Fairy is stocking something like this now. I don't know if it's in stock, I haven't checked because I am planning a big bulk order so I'm waiting to order. And there's that beautiful glitter. And here's the finished set, so I will now apply cuticle oil and show you the end pictures. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, again, let me know if you wanna do any collaborations or you have any designs you wanna see. I'm always up for something new. Don't forget to follow my social media. I will put all my links in the description box below. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for um, following and commenting. I really appreciate it. Take care. Bye.